It's good to be with you. Welcome to Class Outside. Today, we are going to learn how to make a camera follow a path in 3JS. The result will look something like this. What do we need? We will need some tools for this demonstration. Links to the software and media described may be found in the video description. The free 3D modeling software Blender will be used to set up our scene. The Blender add-on named Export Vertices to JSON is required. This can be found on GitHub. This demonstration will use this 3D model of a restaurant. Currently, this is available for free on Sketchfab. A code editor is necessary. I will be using Visual Studio Code, and we need a project that uses 3JS. The code for this project can be found on GitHub. First, we must set up our scene. You may start this by downloading the 3D model from Sketchfab. Then, open a new Blender scene. Delete the default objects. Import the downloaded model. Add some lights to the scene, and place them where you would like. Don't worry too much about adjusting the brightness here. 3JS lights may appear different than they do in Blender. This is because 3JS renders the scene using something called WebGL, or Web Graphics Library. And Blender uses something different, called Cycles, or Eevee. We can adjust the lights in an upcoming step. Once your model and lights are set up, export your scene as a GLTF. Make sure to select Lights from the Include dropdown. Now, let's adjust how our scene will look when rendered in WebGL. To do this, go to 3js.org forward slash editor. Click File, Import, and import the file we just exported from Blender. Find the lights in the scene inspector. Adjust the lights intensity values until you are satisfied. This is how the scene should appear in 3JS. Now, click File, Export GLTF. Open Blender again. Now, let's create a path for the camera to follow. Press Shift A, go to Curve and select Path. Move the line to your desired starting point. Open Edit Mode. Select the vertex at one end and press E. E will extrude the vertex, creating another at the end of the line. Move your mouse and left click to place the vertex. Repeat the process of extruding with E and left clicking until you have a line along your desired path. Now, to export this path in a way that 3JS can read, we need the Export Vertices to JSON add-on for Blender. The GitHub page for this is linked in the description. Go there, click Code, and then download the zip file. Once downloaded, extract it. In Blender, go to Edit, Preferences, and then Add-ons. Click Install, and navigate to the extracted version of the folder. Select the Export Vertices to JSON.py file. Make sure the checkbox is checked off before closing the preferences window. Now, to export the curve, first make a copy of the curve, then right click the copied curve. Go to the Convert To tab and select Mesh. With the Mesh curve selected, click the Object menu, then Apply and select All Transforms. Now go to File, Export, Export Vertices to JSON. Here, I will check the box Closed Curve and set it to True. This way, the camera should loop when the track is complete. Name your file and click Export Vertices. Let's set up the 3JS project. Go to the GitHub page for 3JS Camera Follow Path, linked in the description. Click Code and Download as Zip. Extract the zip file. Now the files for the scene and the curve both need to be placed in the folder Dist Source models. Copy and paste them here. After that, open the project in a code editor, like Visual Studio Code. In the main view.js file, make sure the paths described at the top match the files we just moved to the models folder. Open a terminal window and change the directory to point at the one with the package.json file. Run the install command using your package manager. With npm, this command is npm install. This will install the code this project depends on, like Webpack, to bundle the code, Node.js and Express.js to serve the code as a local web page, and more. Let's look at how this code works. 
The method load curve from JSON takes the data we exported from Blender and converts it to a curve available in 3JS. The name for this is a Catmull ROM Curve 3. More details about this process are found in another video linked below. The scenes camera is set up as a perspective camera. The position is set to the starting position of the curve. Here, the starting position is set to zero. No matter how large the curve may seem or how many vertices it has, the length of the curve will always be from zero to one. The camera's look at position is set to a value close to one. For a closed curve, zero and one will be in the exact same spot. These are only starting values. They will be adjusted over time as we scroll. We can see the camera is added to the scene. Below that, we see the position along path state objects created. This object will retain information about the camera and its position over time as the scene changes. Movement duration and length to scroll are both values worth adjusting, depending on your use case. The movement duration value affects how long the scrolling animation should take in milliseconds. Length to scroll value represents how many ticks on a scroll wheel it should take to completely loop through the curve. Back in mainview.js, we add an event listener. This event listener is for the wheel, when the mouse's wheel is used to scroll. The method on mouse scroll will be called. Let's take a look at on mouse scroll. We take the event and pass it to the handle scroll method, along with the position along path state object. What does handle scroll do? Handle scroll is found in the position along path method.js file. When the mouse is scrolled, the position along path states values get updated. The last scroll time is set to the current time. This keeps last scroll time up to date with the most recent scroll. The starting distance value is also updated to the current distance the camera is along the path. The target distance is updated. This represents the position on the path the camera is scrolling towards. That is what takes place when the wheel is scrolled. In mainview.js, we also see the animate function. In animate, we see update position being called. The method update position is back in position along path methods.js. Update position runs for every new frame generated for the web page, and this is where we determine how far the camera should move each frame. Time elapsed is updated to the current time minus the last scroll time. This is compared with the movement duration value. If the current time hasn't been long enough since the last scroll, then the camera's position should be updated. Time left percentage is the percentage complete towards the total time to animate. Minimum and maximum degree of change represents the slowest and fastest the camera is allowed to move in a single frame. The word interpolation basically means estimating the current value while moving from zero to one over some duration. In this case, the length of time. The interpolated position follows a common formula to estimate the distance between zero and one for the current time. As the interpolation factor increases, the current value gets further away from the starting value and comes closer to the target value. The current percentage on the path is set. This formula is necessary to make sure that when the curve or path has been fully traversed, it properly loops, resetting the percentage to a value between zero and one. Some defaults are provided in case certain values ever become undefined. The newly determined position and the direction to look are set for the supplied object, which in this case would be the camera. To recap, the JSON is loaded into a curve. When the mouse is scrolled, the event is stored in the position along path state object and every frame the camera is updated to animate properly over time based on the changes from the most recent scroll. Let's see it in action. In the terminal window, run the start dev command. With npm, this would be npm run start dash dev. Two command prompt windows should open. One is from the bundling tool called Webpack. This can sometimes take a moment to bundle the files. Open up a web browser and navigate to localhost colon 3000. Scroll the mouse wheel. Well, look at that. Together, we have made a camera move along a path in a 3JS scene. Please let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video. Have a great day and thank you for attending class outside.